Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a really, really fun tag video with my friend Paulina's Beauty. And she is a pretty new friend from YouTube. And how we basically met was we were both featured in Angelica Nyquist video of eight YouTubers under 8K that you should follow. We basically have been like commenting on each other's videos and talking on Instagram. And I was so excited when we decided to collab because I love her channel. She pretty much uploads every day and you do get a lot of content from her. And she's also really, really into color. So I find her channel very, very inspiring. Also, it is so fun to be connected to somebody that has a different perspective on makeup, especially because she lives in another country. She's into color. She has access to different brands. So I've been learning so much about different brands that are from like the UK and a majority of Europe. And it's been really, really cool for me. And we've just had so much fun talking about different brands, different products. And I cannot wait for you guys to check out her video as well. The other thing I do want to mention is it is Paulina's birthday today. So if you guys want to take some time and go wish this girl a happy freaking birthday. I hope she has a wonderful day, Paulina. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for deciding to do this with me. We were trying to pick a day that we should upload and I was like, I for some reason I knew it was her birthday month. I think she had mentioned it in her video and I was like, when's your birthday? And she's like, March 11th. And I was like, perfect, let's upload our videos on March 11th. So I know it's gonna mean a lot to her to have you guys go wish her. Check out her channel, subscribe. She's amazing, she's super, super fun. And uh, I think you will like our content because we're kind of different, but we're kind of the same. And we're from two different countries and we have two different backgrounds. So I think it's really, really cool. I'm so excited to see what she picked out for all of these questions. I need to tell you guys what we're doing today. We are going to do the all the damn palette tag. I don't know if Makeup Struggles created this tag. I feel like she was inspired by somebody else, but she collabed with Georgia Harris, I believe, and they did this video where they combine all the freaking palette tags that are roaming YouTube. I've always wanted to film this video, except I've put it off because mostly I'm kind of a lazy person. I was like, oh, I gotta get all these palettes together and I gotta go through all these questions. And so finally, Paulina came to the rescue and we're gonna do it. I have palettes picked out and I can't wait to talk to you guys about them because you guys know I'm an eyeshadow junkie so this is the perfect tag for me. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. Okay guys, so roughly there's about 30 questions in this tag video. The first one is best packaging. Now I'm gonna kind of cheat on some of these answers, but I could not mention this palette for best packaging. Now this is the Urban Decay Moondust palette. Now this is a little bit special. If you were to go to the store and have purchased this, it would just be the silvery color like here on the back. But I actually got this palette as a Christmas gift in 2017 from my sister-in-law, so sweet. My Ulta store was having an Urban Decay event and apparently they were doing like graffiti work on palettes. So she knew how much I love makeup and she picked this up for me, which I think is so sweet. And I'm just gonna have this palette always in my collection because it was made for me. And that just makes me feel so cool. This is what the inside looks like. This is one of the OG all shimmer palettes, if you ask me, in my opinion. And I love these shadows. Let me talk about the shadows really quick, even though this is about best packaging. I love these to add a hint of shimmer or just like a nice pop of shimmer on your lids. If you don't have this and you can get a hold of it, I would recommend it. I like to use this with like the Too Faced Glitter Glue. It really helps the glitter adhere to your lids and it is a wonderful palette so I am happy I have it. But I had to give it the award for best packaging because come on you guys. It was painted especially for me. I feel like a full-fledged beauty guru with this palette. So this is my best packaging vote. Second question is best color payoff. Now this palette is a little bit broken so I don't want to hold it up all the way. But I'm sure you've seen this multiple times. I love the brand Viseart and this is my newest addition to my Viseart All Matte Palette collection. I won't be buying any more of their palettes. I feel like their shimmers are not as good as their mattes and I wanted to pick this up because I've been getting into color and I really see like a gap in my eyeshadow palette collection for mattes and like bright mattes so I was really excited to add this on. 
I pretty much use this now every time I do a colorful eyeshadow look. I'm wearing some of the ingredients in my crease. It's just a great palette to blend out colors with and then you can do like a nice shimmer. Plus if you're into color, I know Paulina has had her eye on this palette and I keep telling her she needs to invest in it because the color payoff is that good. Pigmentation is amazing. I don't get any fallout from this palette. It blends to perfection. Sometimes with colorful eyeshadows, they look so vibrant and beautiful in the pan, but once you start working them into your crease, they either blend away or they muddy or the color just doesn't look as vibrant as it did in the palette. I have not experienced any of those problems with this palette, so this is my best color payoff palette in my collection. The next question is most versatile. Now again, I feel like I was sneaky with these choices, but I picked the BH Cosmetics It's My Ray Ray Collab Palette. This has 21 color eyeshadows, highlighters, and contours, which I think is why it is so versatile, because not only do you get some sweet eyeshadows, you also get these beautiful contour shades, and I feel like it caters to multiple different skin tones, so if you are lighter than me, you still have some options. If you're my shade, you have some options, and if you are darker than me, you still have some options which I think is amazing. I love their eyeshadow shades. I have a very positive review on this palette on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested. I honestly love this palette. I'm so glad I picked it up. I wasn't a big fan of BH Cosmetics or like I hadn't really tried BH Cosmetics, but recently I did decide to pick up some of their palettes because I feel like they've been doing some good things and this was excellent. So I love it. I think it'll be great for travel and yeah, it is my most versatile palette. The next question is best palette for travel. Now, I picked this one. It's kind of a, I think people will think this is kind of a boring choice or maybe they don't think it's small enough. I don't know. I don't know because I feel like a lot of times we think like, oh, travel, mini palette, mini palette. I don't feel like this is a mini palette because there are 12 eyeshadows in here. I have traveled twice. In the past year, we went to Texas for our anniversary in 2017, and I was in Vegas for a week um, in January, and this is the palette I took with me both times, and it honestly helps me with all my daily look. I can make any look with this. I mean, if I'm working, I can do a simple matte eye with this, but if I'm going out at night, I can do a really fun, smoky eye with this palette as well. So I think this is incredibly handy to have when you're traveling. Of course, it's nice and small, it is affordable, so if you break it or lose it while you're traveling, you're not going to lose any sleep over it, but I think these ColourPop palettes are so underrated, and this one is one of my favorites from ColourPop. Okay guys, question number five is biggest regret, and here it is, it's a pretty big freaking palette too for being my biggest regret. Now this is the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette, and it came out in the holiday 2016. And I basically had so much FOMO from missing out on the Mi Vida Loca palette that I basically told myself that I needed to buy every single Kat Von D holiday launch that came out after that. And so I bought this and honestly if you take a close look at this, I've barely used <laughs> most of these colors. Like for sure I've never touched linen, I've never touched the shade Velour, um, I've never touched the shade Stone, so a lot of these shades are untouched. I do like the shimmers a little bit more than I like the mattes, but I know I've had a few of my subscribers that have seen me talk about this palette offer to buy this from me, so I think eventually it will find its way to my Poshmark. I just haven't like come to terms with it. I don't know what I was thinking with this palette because it's such a cool tone palette and I have such a golden undertone. It's really hard for me to pull off colors like this. It just basically makes me look like... I have a black eye. I recently filmed the My Makeup Style tag and there's a question in there of what colors do you not like to wear and this palette is basically it. The only color I can really think that I would wear like on a normal everyday basis is probably this one Flash which is like a warm toned gold shade but everything else in here is just so not me and I 100% regret buying this palette. <laughs> Okay guys, next question is best color names and I have to mention this one. Now I have not actually used this palette yet, but I did pick this up because Storybook Cosmetics is now available on Ulta.com. I wasn't wanting to purchase off of Storybook's website, so I'm so happy that Ulta is carrying them now. And you guys, I was obsessed. 
I am still obsessed with the movie Mean Girls. I feel like I could quote it to you off the top of my head and I just had to have this. This one really spoke to me so I'm so so glad I have it and basically yeah this looks like the burn book and all the like the names of the colors are like phrases from the movie so I'm just gonna read them to you. Um, first shade is called is butter, carb, gruel, Glen Coco, so fetch, Wednesday, she doesn't even go here, the plastics, Regina George, mouse, duh, you can't sit with us, cool mom, and October 3rd. So those are all really cool phrases from the movie and honestly I cannot wait to dig into this palette. I'm so so excited that I have it in my collection. This movie was basically like my afternoon activity after I was done with school. I would always come home and watch Mean Girls like a hundred times every day. So I'm so glad to have this. This is honestly partially sentimental to me and yeah, it's just really a cool palette. Okay guys, next question is least used. Now I decided to pick the Nubian palette by Juvia's Place. This is the first Juvia's Place palette I think that they ever came out with. And basically this is like 50 Shades of Boring. And even when I first bought it, I didn't really want it. I wanted the second palette that they have. Um, I think it's just called the Nubian 2. But that was sold out and so I bought this one and I barely use it. I'm actually considering decluttering this from my collection but I have all the Juvia's Place palettes because they're so fun and I feel like I'm kind of a completionist and I just can't like bring myself to part with this palette because then my collection won't be complete but I very rarely use this. Now if you're into really neutral colors I would 100% recommend because the formula is great, you get all the shades you need. It's kind of like the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette but I just get very little use from this one because I prefer the formula in the ColourPop palette. So, yep, unfortunately here it is. Okay, next question is most used palette. And I feel like this one was a no-brainer for me. It doesn't really look like I've gotten a ton of use out of this palette, but you guys, Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette is still one of my OG favorite palettes, basically of all time. I feel like this is like my go-to palette. Like if I am in a hurry, I don't know what to do, I'm just gonna grab this palette and go. I freaking love this shade Ladyship. I feel like this and the shade Noble Woman are such a great eye look, but there's also enough neutrals here where you could just do like an all matte look, but I love the combination of shimmers and mattes in this palette, and I feel like this is definitely a must-have in everyone's eyeshadow palette collection, and I'm so glad I have this in mine, and it's definitely one of my most used because I have a lot of eyeshadows, guys, so you're not gonna see like a totally beat up palette in this video at all, but ah, I love this palette so, so much, so I'm gonna give it my most used award. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna move on to the second palette tag, and the first question in that is eyeliner, brush, or nothing? So would you rather have an eyeliner, a brush, or nothing included in your palette? I would honestly say a brush. I like the brushes in the Anastasia palettes as well as the Urban Decay palettes. I've never had a problem with those. I know some people really hate the ABH brushes. I personally like them. Um, I also do like having eyeliner, but I mean, it's not the end of the world. Personally, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me if there's nothing in there, if there is a brush, if there is eyeliner. So if I had to pick, I would say something's better than nothing. So I would go with the brush option. But if there's nothing in there, it doesn't bother me either. So, yeah, sorry. I don't really know what else to say about that. <laughs> okay, guys, the next question is palettes I've hit pan on. Now, I feel like I'm cheating because I have a lot of eyeshadow palettes, so I haven't hit pan on an eyeshadow in a long time. But this is my first ever high-end palette, and I've definitely hit pan on this guy. So I just wanted to show you this. This is from Urban Decay, and I don't use this palette anymore, but definitely in the shade Honey, you can see some pan. I've also hit pan on multiple Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, but I've since decluttered those because, again, they are getting older, and I just don't use them as much, so I don't have any of those palettes. But I'm keeping this one for sentimental reasons and I also have hit pan on the Urban Decay Naked palette which I will show you guys in a second here. Okay so like I said I want to show you guys my Urban Decay palette because the next question is 
favorite Urban Decay Naked palette, and I have to say I'm definitely a fan of the original Urban Decay Naked palette. This was a gift from a dear friend named Trisha, and I'm going to blame Trisha for my makeup obsession because I think this is the palette that really like sent me over the edge into being obsessed with makeup. I can never get rid of this palette because it's one of my first favorite high-end palettes, and... Yeah, I was just such an OG Urban Decay freak. Like, I've had this palette for way too long, and I don't use it on my face anymore, but I gotta keep it for sentimental reasons, and I just didn't think the shades on the second one would work for me. I didn't like the rose gold because it was too light for my skin tone. I did try the smoky palette, was not a fan, and then Urban Decay Naked Heat was good, but mm, I'm not, like, obsessed with it. So, yeah, this is definitely the one I would recommend to you guys. Okay, guys, next question is favorite limited edition palette. Now, I feel like it's tough. Um, a lot of palettes you think are limited edition and they come back and stuff like that, but even this one came back in stock. But I'm going to pick the Maschino with Sephora palette because I really love this palette. Just the aesthetic of this palette is really happy to me and I have this in the background of all of my videos so I had to show it to you guys. This is a Maschino palette. I think this is still available on Sephora.com. It sold out so quickly when it first launched but they restocked it like kind of sneakily. They restocked it last December and I basically keep it because it's adorable. I don't think I'm going to get much use out of the eyeshadows, but I love this palette and it's so, so cute. Okay, guys, the next question is would repurchase or have a backup of? Now, when I was reading this question, I was like, gosh, I really disagree with having backups for palettes because I don't go through my eyeshadow fast enough. If I had to honestly answer this question, I would probably say the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette. Now, this looks like such a effing boring palette, but if you think about this palette, it is so freaking versatile because not only can you do your eyes with this, you can fill in your brows, you can contour, you can bronze up your skin. There's just so many uses for this. You can do some eyeliner with this product. It is just so, so important to have this palette, I think, in your makeup collection. I always recommend this to my friends. I've been trying to convince two of my friends to buy this freaking palette. I know it's expensive. I know it looks super boring, but honestly, you cannot go wrong with owning the Viseart Neutral Matte Palette. It is so freaking good, and it's definitely one that if I used up, I would want to immediately repurchase. Now, like I said, I'm never going to go through this palette, I don't think, even if I used it every day, but if for some reason I were to get through this palette, I would want to have a backup of this guy. Okay, guys, so the next question is a shade I wish was sold individually. This one I really don't have an answer for, and I feel like that is such a sucky thing to say, but... Oh, I have no gaps in my makeup collection where I really wish there was this like one color that they made individually. I'm not a fan of single eyeshadows either, so it's really not something I like have any desire for. If you asked me a couple of years ago when there were no warm shadows to be found, the one shade I would have loved to own as a single would be like a warm orange or a warm brown. These were so freaking hard to come by back in the day, and I still remember just like being on the hunt for one. I finally found the perfect warm brown single. This is Urban Decay Riff and I swear if warm eyeshadow palettes hadn't taken off I would have probably hit pan on this guy because it was literally impossible to find a crease shade for my skin tone and I was so so glad when Urban Decay came out with this eyeshadow color. But now since warm eyeshadows are so in I never reached for this, so I feel like I kind of cheated when I answered your question because the shade I wish they sold as a single is already available as a single, so oops. <laughs> okay, guys, so the seventh question in the palette tag two is wild card. Pick a question from the first tag, and I'm going to pick the question biggest regret, which is question number five in the first tag. And for my biggest regret, I'm going to talk about another really big freaking palette that I wish I hadn't bought. 
Now this palette, first of all, when it released was $75. And at the time, this was probably the most expensive shadow I've ever bought. But I was on a huge Violet Voss kick and I was like, yeah, I need the Holy Grail palette. I need it. I need it. And it's super beautiful. And there's a ton of shades. And I love the pigmentation of Violet Voss eyeshadows. But ask me how many times I've used this palette in the last year. And it's definitely going to be under the amount of fingers in one hand. And that's just really, really sad and depressing for how expensive this palette is. I also had mentioned in my review of this palette that I do really dislike the packaging. I think it's incredibly tacky. And so overall, I do in retrospect really wish I hadn't picked up this palette because it's just wasting away in my eyeshadow collection and it's kind of hard to store and really huge as well. Another palette I do regret purchasing is the Jaclyn Hill palette by Morphe. This palette I just can't support on principle. I was so excited. I used to be such a huge freaking Jaclyn Hill fan and now I feel like, especially now, I feel like she's changed She's not the same Jaclyn Hill that I remember watching and I feel like such a sellout for having bought this palette because they made such a big deal about this palette being limited edition, then they bought it back permanently, then they were like, oh, we had no idea that Morphe was going to be sold at Ulta stores, so we're going to repackage the Jaclyn Hill palette to have nicer, shinier packaging. And all of these controversial things have really spurred a dislike, a very intense dislike for the Morphe brand in general. So if you are new to my channel, I just want you to know that I really regret buying this palette and I really, really choose not to support Morphe anymore. This is the only Morphe palette I have in my collection right now. I am going to hold on to this because I spent so much money on it, but whew, I regret, I regret it so intensely buying that palette. Okay guys, the last question in the Perfect Palette 2 tag is which palette would you recommend to a friend? Now, I just thought I would have fun with this question and I would honestly recommend the Huda Beauty Desert Dust Palette to my friends. Now, I had the Huda Beauty Rose Gold Palette and I still do and I honestly think the quality on that palette is very subpar. This one she knocked out of the park. I honestly wish I had more time to use this palette because I think it's gorgeous. It's great for somebody trying to dabble with color because there's a few purples. The duochromes in this palette are bomb. There's also a pressed glitter so if you're trying to experience Experiment, do a few things, add a few pops of glitter here and there, but still if you want a neutral look you can still do that. So I think this palette is super freaking cool. I love the packaging. I love supporting somebody that is not just a Caucasian beauty guru. Huda Beauty is definitely a girl boss. She's got a huge brand. And I honestly think this palette is amazing for people with my skin tone. And so if I had a friend ask me which palette to get, I would totally recommend this palette. Okay guys, the next question is most recent purchase and my most recent purchase is this palette from Pinky Rose Cosmetics. This is called the Transition Palette and I have had my eye on this palette for a long ass time and it finally went on sale so I was able to pick it up because your girl likes a deal but this just looks so freaking cool and who isn't into these berry shades right now? So I love this because there's a nighttime look and a daytime look and this cool like transition slash blush shade. I also love that this is kind of a different shape all together with the circular situation that they have going on. They have another one that's like golden and green shades and I really want it. But again, I don't want to pay full price for it because I'm not familiar with this brand. Hopefully I try this and it's amazing so I'm going to want to spend more money on it. But this is my most recent palette purchase. Okay, the next question is palette you regret missing out on. Now, if you had asked me, maybe even at the beginning of this year, I would definitely have said the Mivita Loca palette by Kat Von D. But the more I think about it, I feel like, you know, I'm okay. I really don't have any palettes that I completely regret missing out on. I feel like every palette I haven't purchased, it's been for a reason. The Kat Von D one at that time was just simply because I wasn't into color like I am now. But I, I'm not sad about it. I used to be pretty bummed about it. Every time I saw somebody like declutter one, I'd be like, 
no, you're getting rid of the Mivita Loca palette. Just give it to me, please. And I know people say it's amazing quality and this and that, but honestly, I'm going to be okay. So I don't really regret it, but I figured for the sake of answering the question, that will be my answer. Okay, question number four is palettes that make me happy to look at. And I have to say this guy. Now, this is pretty new to my collection. This is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac palette. I tried a few more things from BH Cosmetics basically at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018. And I am still testing this palette out. So far, it's such a cool palette, you guys. I looked at it online and I was like, I'm never going to use that palette. But it's an awesome palette because they literally gave you everything you need in this palette to create smoky eyes, to create daytime eyes, to create a fun, colorful eye look. And they threw in like a little highlighty shade in here. So I can use this on my face. I use it in the inner corner. I use it on my brow bone. This palette is brilliant. Now, the shimmer shades swatch gorgeously. I'm actually wearing the shade Sagittarius and Capricorn on my lids and I used the Too Faced glitter glue to secure it to my lid. But I can't believe this palette is only 21 bucks and it's just so inspiring and fun. It's basically like a great way to get into color if you're like color for dummies. This is like perfect because it's not too too out there but it's still colorful enough where you know it's gonna keep you on your toes so this palette makes me incredibly happy to look at and the price point makes me even happier okay question number five is palettes I've changed my mind about now this palette is definitely one I changed my mind about I guess you could also call this like a palette regret because this was a palette I bought again because I love colored rain the brand in general, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I love Color Rain. I love their quality, blah, 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 blah. And I was so excited when I got this palette. And obviously, you can see why. I mean, it's got beautiful shades. The thing that maybe changed my mind about this palette is I feel like they kind of threw these shades in as like an afterthought. And so I feel like it really screws up this palette because if you cover up these shades, you have this beautiful, warm eyeshadow palette, but then they had to throw in this green and blue and something I really started thinking about once I had this palette and started playing with it is it's really hard to create transitions for a shade like Grandeur or Opulence with these warm, like matte shades. And I feel like that is the downfall of this palette and it makes it really hard to use these, you know, cool tone shades. And it just makes me really sad because I was really excited and I loved this palette when I first got it. But the more I played with it, I realized like it wasn't easy to use. And I feel like, especially for me, I'm not really a beginner, but I'm not like this eyeshadow expert. And I feel like this palette just, it could have either been two palettes or, you know, like they could have just picked a theme and stuck to it. I feel like they try to do everything in one palette and they didn't do a good job. So this is definitely a palette I changed my mind about. Okay guys, so next question is biggest surprise and I mean, I have to mention these palettes to you guys. These palettes literally knocked my freaking socks off. These are the Pat McGrath palettes. I have Mothership 1, 2, and 3, and they are incredibly beautiful. Holy shit, like, this formula is unbelievable. These duochromes are insane in the freaking membrane. I am such a fan of these. They were so surprising to me because I was one of those people that had avoided Pat McGrath and I was like, ah, oh, her makeup is too expensive. I can't afford it. I'm not going to buy like her pigments and stuff. But as soon as they announced eyeshadow palettes, I was like all over this shit. And of course I bought them all because I'm an excessive person and holy crap, her formula is insane. I just can't tell you guys how much I love these palettes and how wonderfully surprising they were because they're pigmented, they're so buttery, they feel wonderful and weighted, and they really feel like you get what you're paying for, which is luxury and beautimous, wonderfulest eyeshadows. <laughs> what palette inspires me the most? Now, I'm going to have to double up and say this guy. Right now, this is just really, really, really exciting me because I feel like 
I can do so many looks with this palette and the pigmentation is great. I could just wear just this palette alone or combine it with another palette and I feel like it is just so bright and vibrant and spring and it just inspires the crap out of me. I feel like I definitely got my money's worth with this palette and it just is totally my makeup vibes right now. So this is the palette I pick for the one that inspires me the most. Okay, so you've got me doubling up on palettes. My no fail palette again is the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. I'm telling you guys, this might look like a complete snooze fest, but it is honestly a no fail to me because I know with my eyes closed how all these shades are gonna look on me. I know what look I can create, what's appropriate with these, where exactly to place all of these colors on my lid so I look smoking hot. This is my no fail palette. I know that if I lost all of my eyeshadow palettes and I could only pick one and I only had this one to choose from, I would get by with life and it's affordable and it's just amazing. So I love this palette very, very much. Okay guys, you have to comment on this question down below if you made it to this final question because I feel like I've been talking to you guys for hours. And that question is, what is on your wish list? So I have a few different things, but my number one thing right now that's on my wish list is the new Pat McGrath Mini Palettes. Oh my god, I'm so excited for those. I really want the bright colored one, and I think I might get the bronze one as well. I'm not 100% sure yet. They launch tomorrow, so I'm gonna see if I can get my paws on them, and that is on my wish list. Another palette that I really, really want is the Gimme Glow Cosmetic Staple Palette. I missed out on that the first time around, but they're actually reformulating it, and it looks even freaking better, so I'm so excited to maybe be able to get my hands on that. So another one I want is by Blush Tribe. It's called the Blossom Palette. I saw this on Paulina's channel and it looks freaking gorgeous so I definitely want to get my hands on that. And I'm sure if I had enough time to think about it I could think of a million other palettes that I would like to get my hands on as well but I have got some really really cool eyeshadow palettes you guys and I couldn't be happier. Okay guys, that is it for the all the damn palette tag tag video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of my answers. If you guys are up for it, definitely leave me some of your answers down in the comments. You guys know I read all of my comments, so I'd be super happy to hear some of your answers. If you are here from Paulina's channel, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Also, if you are just one of my everyday YouTube friends that are here day after day. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for checking out this collab. Please don't forget to check out Paulina's video and support that girl. She is amazing and I know there are big, big things coming from her in the future. And Paulina, thank you so much for doing this collab with me. It means so much to me. Happy birthday. I hope you have a great, great day. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!